In the late 1800s, Charles Walton rose to prominence as a manufacturer of leather goods. He initially based his operations in Pennsylvania, but quickly set up shop in England so he could import and export leather goods all around the world. By the 1900s, he had become one of the world's wealthiest leather merchants and had gained a good reputation for himself as a generous employer, paying the highest rates to his employees in the industry. By 1910, Walton and company had become so efficiently streamlined that Charles was able to sit back and enjoy the fruits of his labor, relying on his well-paid staff to execute their job responsibilities without a hitch. With so much free time, he became heavily involved in charity and took on board positions at nearly a dozen other companies. Now, it was time for him to build his dream house. He hired renowned Philadelphia architect David Knickerbocker Boyd to design a rambling mansion, mixing the mission style with Mediterranean influence. The estate in St. David's consisted of 40 pristine acres of rolling hills, with three separate lakes scattered about the property. As we approach the estate he named Walmarthen, we will pass by the gatehouse, where, curiously, there is no gate to be found. As we look across the lake towards his log cabin, we can imagine the community coming here to fish and swim on his property. Charles believed it was his duty to share what he could with his neighbors and invited all the local families to use his grounds at their leisure. Continuing up the drive, we hear the soft creaking of the water mill turning. Then, looking ahead, the seven-car garage comes into view. This is a good place for us to step out and begin following the garden paths towards the house. As we make our way through the formal gardens, archways frame scenic views of the property. Not only are there arcades overgrown in ivy, at every twist and turn, there is a whole new world waiting to be discovered. Finally, we climb out of the garden, finding the porte cochere. Before we enter the mansion, let's zoom out to fully appreciate the curated and idyllic setting. To find the front door, we will begin ascending the stairs in the stone vestibule. As we arrive in the main hall, we find antique European tapestries affixed to the wall behind a stone block arcade. Now the stair hall comes into view with large marble columns supporting a coffered stone block ceiling. This glorious space is dominated by the bifurcated marble staircase accented by wrought iron balustrade. Directly across from the stair hall is the library, with a triple barrel vaulted ceiling soaring above oak paneled walls and glass pane bookcases. In an interesting play on architectural elements, the dining room's far wall terminates into a groin vaulted alcove. This eclectic mix of elements continues with the use of fluted pilasters and glazed tile framing the fireplace. Nearby, the breakfast room could be used for less formal meals as the indoor fountain is flooded by natural light. Following this more casual approach to living in Walmarthen, the billiards room is contained by ribbed groin vaults. From the terracotta floor to the glazed tile surround, we can imagine this colorful space is warm and inviting despite its grand architectural composition. Unfortunately for Charles, his time in the house was cut short. After enjoying Walmarthen for only three short years, he fell away to a heart attack at the age of 54. His family continued to enjoy the mansion and its park-like grounds for many more years, continuing to welcome the community to fill their garden with long walks and their fields with the sounds of children playing. Eventually, while Marthen was conveyed to Eastern University, the grounds were mostly redeveloped as the university expanded, and though the mansion has been readapted for use by the school, its facade remains virtually untouched by time. Did you have a favorite room or feature? Let me know down below in the comment section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.